I, you know, I know there's a lot of Dallas fans in here. Where's my Dallas fans at in the chat? How are we feeling today? How about them Cowboys? I'm going to give you all your, 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 your flowers, you know? <laughs> um, I, I come into the season, and I'm staring at this win total at 10.5, and, and I'm like, I want the under. You know, and, and it's kind of a half-baked narrative I formed in my own head until I looked at them very closely in August. And after placing that massive Eagles bet to win the East, I started sweating because I looked at the defense and I said, you know what, they're still going to be really good. And, um, you know, the, the, the departures on offense, the thing I get obsessed about is, all right, the backfield looks pedestrian. I mean, like, you can't blame me with Zeke looking the way he's looked the past couple of years. And maybe yesterday him hurtling people out the gate was an aberration. But C.D. Lamb shredding people in man coverage is not an aberration. Dak Prescott, who got his deal right before the game, you know, and that was part of it to me was like, hey, they're not they're not paying Dak. What are they really about this year? They were either playing possum or they were holding the news for a little bit. They did lose some money um, kind of waiting these contracts out. But the start of this fucking the start of this ball game three, it was four. Uh, three. When was the four? I got three. Yeah, you got three. three. You just analyzed. Matt will count. <laughs> Okay, but I, I'm, I'm watching the beginning of the game and you got Zeke hurtling somebody, his first play. Like, you're just like, what is this special sauce that he likes in the yep. Cowboys locker room that he gets? Because that looked like something that I haven't seen from him in a couple of seasons. Not only that, he looks cool in 15. Back with um, his bestie. Yeah, he's back with his bestie. <laughs> but you've also got, you know, Dak to Lamb over Ward, who's a tremendous cover guy, and Brady, who we're going to talk about in a little bit is like, what a throw. That's his first, like, wow, from the booth, that was a dot. And it was. And standing there and hitting hitting Cooks on the touchdown against Blitz, you know, Thornhill kind of got flat-footed and thought they were going to hit the hot. He was just shredding them across his body at Jalen Brooks. I mean, like, when they survived the strip sack to Garrett, when they survived the near pick in the middle of the field, you were kind of like, this is it. Um, and maybe for Cleveland and their staff and everybody in that organization, they're not surprised by what they saw yesterday. But even for people like me, who knew Deshaun has a pretty low floor at this stage in his career, have to be shocked today. Um, because a 17-3 lead against that team, the Browns, is a death sentence. And I don't know if the people in camp knew this was coming and it had to be like the longest death march Six weeks of like, holy shit, we are walking into a beehive. We're just marching into a beehive. And we know it, and people don't know it. Vegas knows it because they set this total at seven and a half, and the roster's really quality. And I know they went into the game without two starting tackles, but you told me Dewan Jones can, can, can handle it. Um, you, you bring in Jerry Judy. There's excitement there. You br Amari Cooper's still the man, although he's probably pissed off that they were dangling him in a trade and the trade didn't happen. Um, you're down, Chubb. All these things are true. But this guy, Deshaun Watson, is cooked. The theme of the day is it's week one. Okay, so as we get down the line, I don't want to make any statements that lead you to believe that I think I know exactly what's going to happen because we learn this lesson every year in week one. But this is one place on the map that I can, I can point to and say, I don't know how they fix this. The people in Cleveland that gambled on bringing him in have to feel like a guy who put his life savings <laughs> on a total that, that went over in the first quarter. Or, you know, they're just sitting there sweating this bet. And while the guy in the sports book is done with that in three hours, these guys are sitting here for the better part of a half decade and they're going to be collecting dust watching this franchise, the one that needed a quarterback more than any. They finally get the best quarterback they ever had because Deshaun Watson in, in Houston was amazing. Okay, He was a magician. But then they take the gamble after that thing. And uh, I got to say, I don't have a lot of empathy. Even worse, when you look at what you gave up and how Baker's doing right now, it probably even makes you more sick. Oh. <laughs> Uh, imagine if you had Baker Mayfield. It, that's what I'm saying. All right. And so, <laughs> listen, I, maybe he got dinged in preseason. I doubt it. I want to go back to what I'm 
what I've been referring to for the past two years, which is Deshaun Watson's physical state. Everybody's talking about the mental state. Does he still have it? And that's one conversation. And no, I don't think he still has it because you pan to the sideline. And I'm not Oz the mentalist or a body language expert, but he is. it's the thousand-mile stare. Physically, though, we talk about Andrew Luck. He got peppered, got hit out of the league. Same thing with Burrow early in his career. We've seen the effects of that. The thing we never talk about is Deshaun Watson in Houston, how many times he got sacked and hit. And I think his body shot. I think his head shot, too. And, uh, and this team let Joe Flacco walk out the door, and he ain't walking back through it. So I don't know what you're going to do. I really don't. I do. This is this is because this Super is your Bowl. team. This is my Super Bowl. <laughs> you got So let's and, let's figure out this, a way. This started yeah. exactly how I wanted because that we, is how you wanted it to start. We need Deshaun <laughs> Watson to look as terrible, gotcha. and broken as gotcha. he can, so they give Jameis Winston the rock. That's that's their backup. That's who they put their chips on. So and I a, think that him in that job, offense. Yeah. I think Jameis Winston in that offense. At right now in the present time will be a better chance for the Browns to win or to have a chance to win if he's running that offense. I, like you're saying, I don't know if Deshaun Watson, it's, if it's over for him. To me, he looked uncomfortable. His shoulder doesn't look the same. His throws don't look yeah. the same. And like you said, he's still getting hit. Yeah. And for someone who already is kind of falling apart or being put back together, taking those type of hits and being the running quarterback that you are, it's not going to bode well for him. Breon Mitchell said Watson's going to light up week two. Chris, be quiet. <laughs> hey, Breon, I will drive to your house and and and, uh, and deliver a check for $20,000 if the Browns win the Super Bowl. How's that? Oh, man. Yeah, hey. Breon Mitchell, find wow. her. Find her wow. because she doesn't know ball. You're giving out a uh, Super Bowl bet like this, twenty grand, and then also you have the Dolphins to a tattoo if the if the Dolphins if they win, win the Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Can I get listen, a piece of that, Breon? No, it, it, no, it, it, because like, I, I gave I, the Browns, listen. I gave the Browns the Super Bowl pick. I yeah, get a piece of that. Listen, right? no, Breon, <laughs> you deserve this. You deserve to sit here with false hope for for twenty two weeks. <sighs> You know, um, but but honestly, I just look at this Browns team and it's a shame because they've done such a good job of assembling talent. Now you're down in Joku. And this defense is good, but they're not good enough to overcome this. Um, and, and, you know, like, this is how bad it was. I think the coaches were, were shell-shocked. They gave up four scoring drives in the second quarter, mm. like in an 11-minute period, okay? 518 to go before the half. You're just like, please, let's take it to the break, right? Take it to the locker room. Three, I think they, they, they have a 141 possession, okay? Um, the next play, they go five plays, 41 seconds. They punt. They get the big Turpin return. They give a 57-yard field goal. 206 left, okay? At this point, the game's out of reach. Just get to the locker room. Can we talk about it in the locker room? Like in private? Nah. Four plays, 20 seconds, Kendrick's pick. Another field goal. And then five plays, 42 seconds. Aubrey from 66, which we should talk about. When you talk about the Cowboys, the way they play defense, they're going to be in some lower scoring games at times. I mean, like, they're, they're going to be in some games where people play complementary football and the, and the Cowboys offense doesn't look just quite as good as that. And Ferguson's hurt for a week or two. That, yep. That's a bullet you dodge there because if you're down Ferguson, all of a sudden some of the things I worry about with the offense come true, okay? But if, if you <laughs> – if if you if you just if you just hang in there and get to half down ten points, like maybe there's a way, and maybe that's how Cleveland wins some of their games, keeps the points down, run the football. But I just, I mean, I don't see a, a way that they can do this. Dallas's defense Zimmer. is damn good. Zimmer's damn good, and Aubrey can kick the ball from si sixty six yards casually. He they kicked the ball through one, the upright. Right? They didn't count it. Yeah, he almost gave up four scoring drives in eleven minutes. I'm pissed yeah. they didn't let him go from what seventy one. Oh me they too. Just fucking just let him do it. Or just <laughs> just kick it's still an improvement. Just kick it. Just kick it, Mike. You robbed us all of like he hit from sixty six. Yeah. Kick it again. 
the guys, he's been kicking it into the, they get those, the big dog's eyes. <laughs> he's just been kicking it into the dog's eyes all first half. Just try from 71. But I will say, the defense from Dallas deserves a lot of credit. Micah Parsons running through a guard mm -hmm. on that Lawrence sack. Yeah. He, he lost weight. He's down 240. I can't tell. He's a stud. Um, they had six sacks and 17 QB hits. It was it was the Marcus Lawrence. Uh, Lawrence geez. is a stud, man. The defense five great. tackles, three PFLs. I think, dude. I think Micah Parsons had like nine quarterback hits or something like that. Crazy. Uh, it's ridiculous. That's a good day at the office for them. And you know, you come in thinking Cleveland's defense, Cleveland's defense. Well, Dallas, um, that defense is going to keep them in a lot of games this year. And we'll see if the corner issues. I mean, like that's a that's an easy. If right. you're Dallas, that's ironically who you want to play week one, Deshaun Watson. Yeah, you know, because you got Kalen Carson, who's got to play big snaps this year. You lost Bland. You know, they they are changing the defense, and there's a lot of communication on the back end with Zimmer. You know, changing the picture pre snap. So this was a good game to actually start with. So yeah. how do you, just looking ahead? Yeah, how do you think? Your boy Saquon and Jalen Hurts is going to do against Dallas. Well, defense. before we get there, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Because it's your Super Bowl pick. Yep. You are the Browns brass. Congratulations. <laughs> what does All that right? mean? That means you got to make decisions. Okay. Okay. What are you doing at quarterback? Let's say it's not Jameis. Is there somebody you'd call? Get creative. Because I got a guy. Pastronaut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think, right, I, right I, think what, I, think, I think this is what we call a Band-Aid, you know? <laughs> what about Tannehill, Chris? Who? Tannehill. That, that's, mm -hmm. that's realistic, okay? I want to give you something that might be – some people might scoff at me, uh -oh. but physically the guy looks there. People think he's washed. People thought Baker was washed. Let's see how Carson Wentz is doing. Come on! Let's let's yeah. call Andy and Come see on. what it would take to part ways with a with a quality backup for Patrick Mahomes, a guy who's played good ball before. Over in house. Over in house, yeah. I know what the ceiling on in house is. But like to try to win now, you yeah. would do that. Trying to win now. Give Jameis a run, and if he doesn't look good, and I mean good, then go. You throw as much shit as you can at the wall, and try. I mean, it's like being down big. You throw a bunch of parlays up there trying to get back to zero. And Carson is that juicy five-leg parlay. You know? We've talked about preseason tape being worthless. Worthless. Carson's preseason tape, much better than Jameis's. Yeah. Saying. It's still worth it worthless. It's still worthless. Worthless. But, just saying. But it, for, it, it, for whatever it's worth. For what it's worth. And it might be worth nothing. I would look. Now, to the question about the Eagles. Man, I felt good the other night. I walked away from that game, and I don't know about you, Bo, but I walked away thinking, like, damn, they fixed a lot of things on defense. Bond, your boy, played awesome. Mitchell looks like a stud. The front didn't do anything spectacular, but they had a lot of hidden plays that helped them win the game. And offensively, the motion, being under center, you know, having answers for the blitz, Saquon just looking like Saquon mm -hmm. and and Jalen surviving Jalen's bad moments the floor on his bad moments were really was really low if people want to know more about what I thought about that game at one in the morning right after it happened go check out our YouTube page um, I did about 45 minutes on that game suffice to say I think um, it's a two-team race um, mm -hmm. and it's closer than I thought because the way Dallas looked yesterday it is week one for both these teams but Philly got better. I don't know if Dallas got better. Right. And Dallas's work that they have to do is going to be in December and January. They're a great regular season team. Yep. And it looks like this confirms that they'll be you know, competitive again. But when D December and January hits, are you going to be good? Right. And we won't know that answer. Yeah, for a long time. Dallas, it's the Dallas cycle. Yeah. This is, this is when they're good. And then a few more games, a few more wins. <laughs> the fan base is going to start getting a little bit annoying and then they get really annoying going into the playoffs and then it's all shut down when they lose it's <laughs> whatever it's gonna be it's gonna be spectacular i think this race is gonna be a lot of fun these two games